Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, last of the Beige Box PC desktops. And uh, this is episode 3 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. So, there's a couple things we're going to do today. We're going to start actually investigating and uh, devouring everything in this city that there is to learn, like some kind of eternally conspicuous infovore. And we're also going to run through the information collection system in our laptop, which is going to be useful. And hopefully also I will come up with a plan of attack for this whole overall investigation. Um, but before we do any of that, I'm going to have a look at this save point and unlock the fast travel so that I can get both the fast travel point and a delicious collectible uh, skin to look at. I'm also going to just say now that there's probably going to be a fair bit of rummaging. Um, you know, exploring, looking around, examining things, poking my nose in places where it oughtn't be. Also, hey, can I just... Haha! <laughs> I have defeated your chain link fence. Haha! <laughs> I'm so much smarter than this guy. Oh no, it's locked. Okay. Well, that's fair. So, um, yeah, there is a lot of this kind of like climbing around on rooftops, looking in the bins, rummaging uh, aspect to these sorts of things. So, with that in mind, I think the sort of plan of attack for my investigation is going to be as follows. Step one. Um, review evidence currently in laptop. Step two, attempt to gain entry to the uh, actual scene of the crime and investigate the, the actual scene of the crime. Step three, uh, go interview all of the persons of interest with regards to this case and then from there I'll think about where I'm going to go next. I'm pretty sure each of those people is going to send me to one or more other people. After all, we've already talked to Carmelina Silence, and what she did was tell me to go talk to, uh... Well, she didn't tell me to go talk to, uh, the Witness of the End, but... She did tell me that her alibi is that she was hanging out with Witness at the End, so... We are gonna go do that. But, yes, as a side effect, I guess is what you would say, of, uh, this sort of exploration system, there are Shinji interactions, blood crystals, and unique pickups hidden all over the game world. And to be honest, I suspect some of them may be relevant to the plot. You know, there may be interesting secrets to uncover. So I'm going to do my best to explore this island as fully as possible. I think the moon is the most beautiful thing on this island. It's not on the island, it's just cool it, love dies. You don't have to be like this, you know what I mean. Do you like the moon? It used to be nice. Used to be? The golden city on the dark side is deserted now. The lost god Pain fled to the moon and took over the city. He's leeching power from the moon to regain his strength. Why are you such a downer? I wasn't asking you to tell me everything that's bad with it, I was just making small talk. The moon is beautiful, and it's massive in the sky of this island. Why can't you just say, Yes, Shinji, I agree, it is beautiful, and we have a nice conversation. <laughs> Pop, gone, disappeared, amazing. I love the vibes of Shinji. How do I get in here? Do I have to go in through the building to try and get up onto the roof, maybe? It looks like there's an artifact. Oh, it's this walkway. Aha. Can I hop onto that? Yep. Oh, maybe not. So... Oh! Okay, that's just unlocked then, I guess. Uh, there are a bunch of locked doors around, some of which we can hack with our laptop and some of which have power switches elsewhere. Island Sequence 007 Memento. The citizens revolt against us. Grand Marshal Aikiko 14 subjugates them. It is a bloody time, a time of shame and sorrow. Well, gee, I wonder why the citizenry would revolt, considering they're kidnapped and brought here by force, uh, and then expected to expend their own lives in worship of horrible blood deities. I thought I saw something else up here. I thought there was a, a blood crystal, but maybe not. Ah, oh, aha, there it is. Am I going to get horribly electrocuted if I go in here? This might be the end. <laughs> this might be the end of this. Uh, this could be a roguelike. Instantaneous electrocution or a blood crystal. I think that's a risk worth taking. I'm a genius. Oh, hey, wasn't I supposed to be doing something? Oh, right, I'm supposed to investigate some murders. Right, I should probably get back to that. Huh. 
One of the things I really enjoy about uh, this game is the way it uses its artistic influences. Or, I mean, whenever I say something like that, I'm sort of halfway guessing, because as I've said before, I have played the first 20 minutes of this game a few times while prepping, and the rest of this is blind let's play. But um, there is clearly a lot of the design of this island as a place, which is inspired by early 2000s uh, CG art. Um, which makes sense, because the game itself is incredibly heavily influenced by Synthwave and Vaporwave. Uh, and particularly that sort of as yet unnamed new Vaporwave uh, sequential sequ uh, sequel genre, there should be a word for those, of um, a sort of like weird net art influenced kind of data wave sort of, you know, music that sounds like Vaporwave made out of a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a multimedia CD-ROM from 1998, that kind of thing. So, um, right. Well, we can look at our laptop wherever we are. And that's here. So, so, so it looks like our notes are basically just a list of things we should do. So we start with the potential leads, uh, examine the murdered guards, figure out the seals, and, um, oh, uh, find, find an upgrade. That, that's what we got from Dead Nebula and also find a way into the barracks. So this is, this, is, this is all the leads that we've found that aren't relating to specific individual uh, members of the syndicate, I guess. So, need to question Doom Jazz, find K-Hacks, question Aikiko. Uh, all of the individual characters here just say question them, except for Carmelina, who we've talked to, so hers says that we should ask Witness about her alibi and attempt to verify that they were together because of course the Witness could be like, Witness could just say, of course we were together. That doesn't prove they were together. That's just that's just uh, testimony. I actually need, would need some kind of proof, like uh, the island logging their location. Because, you know, this is a horrible cyberpunk dystopia where your entire moment of your existence is logged by existence itself. Uh, you know, permanently stamped into the Akashic record of this universe. Just, just in case you ever thought you could escape Alexa's cr uh, cruel grasp. So, suspect number one, Grand Marshal Akiko 14. Uh, I'm not going to read their little explanations here because I suspect that's going to be information that we are given when we talk to them. That's going to be the pop-up we get from Starlight going, hey, this guy's deal is this. So none of this information is new to us just yet. I guess once we have evidence about individuals, we can start to put it in here. Interesting. Okay. So it's, so it's kind of an inventory system, but where all the... In uh, inventory items are bits of information you've gathered. So I guess you can categorize, you know, you can say, okay, this person's testimony says that this person was at the scene of the crime or something like that. I assume that's how it's going to work. Inventory is pretty obvious. This is everything we've gathered so far. Interesting. Everyone has a blood vial with a unique blood code. Nobody's told us that yet. That might come in handy. And that's only the syndicate, not the citizens. And then the relics are all the individual one-off collectibles we've found. Population has everybody. So we have leader Montserrat, the syndicate's glorious leader. He formed the syndicate with his mentor Ezekiel. Montserrat became the leader of the syndicate when he killed the mad leader Ezekiel and saved the syndicate from darkness, a victim of the council massacre. Hailing from North Africa, High Priestess Gabriella of Devotion is seen as a mediator between the Syndicate and the gods. Only certified priests are allowed to communicate with the gods, since communing with astral deities opens passages in space which demons can pass through. My narration might be a little bit busted today because my neighbours have decided to turn on their fireplace despite the fact it's middle of summer, which means that I currently have half-burnt volatiles coming up the chimney from the flat below, which um, means there's a lovely smell reminiscent of burning hair currently worming its way through the... Uh, delicious oxygen of my flat. Pandora too established the Dead Nebula Company early in the Syndicate and became the only goods manufacturer on the islands. In conjunction with Masashiro Heavy Industries, she established the Deep Factory in the sprawling caverns under the islands. That, yeah, um, privately owned monopolies are usually a bad thing in a society. Kafka Memory was a founding member of the Syndicate and conceived the plan to mass abduct citizens from the real world and bring them to the island, forcing them to worship the gods. Oh, interesting, so they call it the real world, then. A cold-hearted man that grew increasingly introverted over the millennia. Lunatic Pope. So, I, 
Okay, so I just want to jump in right now and say I absolutely love the naming schemes in this game. Schemes in this game. Every single character has a name that I absolutely love. Second in command to Gabriella and handles most of the day-to-day -day running of religious aspects of the syndicate. Born on the fifth island and advanced into the council through selfless devotion and a brain for interpreting bureaucratic aspects of the god's dogma. So if citizens are kidnapped from the real world, but we know that Lydia originated in the real world and f came here on purpose to become a member of the syndicate. So how does one become a member of the syndicate? Is it just luck? Do you apply? Uh, or do you need to know, know people? Fine Stranger, a mystery to almost all in the Syndicate and Council, it's unknown where he came from, responsible for reading tomes during Council meetings. Leon Disaster, early in the Syndicate the need for a currency arose. Disaster found a way to harden blood into crystals. It was decided that only his blood would be used so as not to flood the market. <laughs> Brilliant, absolute genius. Macken Origin, Macken took over Masahiro Heavy Industries and Masahiro himself was murdered by the mad leader Ezekiel. Since then, Maken has used her flair for industrial design to grow MHI and adapt to the changing needs of the Syndicate. She is responsible for the maintenance of the Syndicate's power source, the Reality Folding Drive. Eyes Kiwami, born in a remote area of India and came to the Syndicate during the, during the Great Betrayal. After saving Doom Jazz from torture, the two chased after the newly formed Syndicate as they made their way through Mesopotamia. Eyes Kiwami took his own life several years ago, and it is unknown why. Oh, so he, he wasn't part of this, okay. So I guess he was still counted as being on the council even though he died years ago. Does that mean that there's no interplay between the syndicate and the council or are these like lifetime positions and that one was just never filled? Okay, so these guys have already left. Procures conditions and distributes citizens on the island. So that's the person who, oh wait, previously married to Lady Love dies. Oh, interesting. So she was formerly married to the guy who kidnaps people or the, I don't think there's a gender listed there actually. Isaiah Bullet could be anything. Nicolina Rose works directly under Pandora 2 to manage Dead Nebula, responsible for negotiating the Crimson Acid collaborations. Jahim Fortune maintains Syndicate Graveyard on top of the mountain, responsible for funeral rites for Syndicate members only. Madam Complex, responsible for maintaining the gardens, also open, performs the duty of the opening of the door at the end of the year. Balthazar Tears, the lead engineer for Mashahiro Heavy Industries, working under Macken Origin, responsible for the God Bruiser nuclear weapons. Brad, I guess. Grace Bloodlines, who was the the actual murder by Henry Division ten years ago. Responsible for conducting and overseeing exercising of demons. Interesting. So the person who was responsible for getting rid of demons was killed by someone inhabited by a demon. There's definitely something interesting going on there. K-Hax was the, their, like, master craftsman and just is missing. Judge we, we know about already. All of these people, I assume, are going to get more detailed overviews anyway, including the information in here, so I'm not going to read it. Henry Division, a citizen born to Rena Division 27 years ago, father unknown, possessed by a demon 10 years ago, and currently incarcerated in the Desolation Cell, accessible from South Beach. Oh, so I, just, I should definitely talk to him as well, it's not just Syndicate. 3106 worshippers and workers, victims of mass abductions, brought to the islands and forced to worship the gods. The psychic energy created by their worship is channeled by Syndicate priests and fed to the gods. I'm starting to wonder if there's a difference between demons and gods, because it seems like the gods suck also. Citizens are the lowest class of island inhabitants, spending their lives in worship and working on the deep factory and farm. Timeline. Man's prehistory, the gods come to Earth, gift man technology, and the world becomes embroiled in a millennia-long war. The gods are betrayed by their enslaved armies and are killed, imprisoned, or driven from the Earth. The syndicate is formed by worshippers of the gods. The imprisoned god Silent Goat learns of the Syndicate and psychically gifts them his power. The Syndicate uses power to create the Paradise Island sequences and the reality folding drive to fuel them. So I've been saying this all along, but it certainly seems like this society and the people who run it are not good people. There, This is not a good system to exist, perhaps. Lady Love Dies is seduced by Damned Harmony and exiled to the Idle Lands. 964 years ago, Paradise Island 24 is born. So this one lasted for nearly a thousand years, which is, seems like a pretty good record for an island sequence. 10 years ago, Henry Division illegally communicates with the gods and is possessed by a demon of unknown origin. That does imply that there is a legal method for god communion, which actually, I suppose that's true because the syndicate channel the, di the divine worship energy of the citizens up to the gods. Henry murders his mother and during the arrest also kills the syndicate's exorcist, Grace Bloodlines. 
demonic corruption taints the island, Paradise 24 is condemned. Wait, hang on, isn't that this? So we're still in that one. Okay, so it's taken them 10 years since this island being declared broken garbage for them to actually get the next one ready. And then one day ago, 25 was ready and they were about to go. Henry escapes, murders, the council are murdered. Henry is caught three minutes later outside the council building by Aikiko. Aikiko tells the witness that Henry is found and that the first seal guards have been murdered. Aikiko confirms to the witness that the seals are closed so she can't get in. So they, supposedly they've been murdered in... Well, we don't know that they've been murdered at all. They might just be trapped in there for all we know. And there doesn't seem to be a connection between Henry and the council murders, except for the fact that Henry has their blood in his stomach and a knife. If every, if every syndicate member has a blood vial that contains their blood code, it seems reasonable that Aikiko could possibly have planted that blood on Henry and in his stomach. But perhaps that's just my own leftist bias causing me to not trust the armed forces. Um, judge assumes authority and locks the paradise gates. Doom Jazz arrives to examine Henry and confirms that his blood is that of the council members. Syndicate meeting is held in courtroom. Judge appoints Carmelina. Judge decrees he's bringing me out of exile uh, and activates Starlight. Okay. So yeah, already there's a zillion holes in this. We don't actually have hard proof. We have a lot of damning circumstantial evidence, but all of that evidence could have been placed by Aikiko. We also can look at the map if we want to. Um... Pyramid, home of a god, reality folding drive, the arcane power source gifted to the syndicate by the silent goat and built by Mashahiro Heavy Industries. This whole episode is going to be me reading shit out of the laptop, Jesus Christ. Agri-fields, state-of-the-art agriculture facilities that produce the island's synthetic food. Deep factory, huge network of catacombs filled with the industries that facilitate life on the island, Doom Jazz's lot, yacht, syndicate HQ where all matters of government are conducted, council building, which is the crime scene. Gardens, syndicate apartments, which are the luxury apartments, marshal barracks for them, well, for the marshals to be barracked in. Uh, let's see, the courthouse, Mountain Gorge, which is a valley used as a commute. K Hax's workshop. I definitely want to have a look in K Hax's workshop if I can, but that'll be part of investigating K Hax's murder. The opulent ziggurat, a large temple where most religious ceremonies are conducted. At the end of an island, all citizens are ritualistically slaughtered by the syndicate in the temples, their psychic energy offered up to the gods. So does that mean that they have to harvest a whole a whole set of new citizens for every new island? What are they going to do if the real world runs out of people? Syndicate graveyard? What else have we got? Citizen apartments. Apartment blocks breed madness. People are too close to each other. Yeah, that seems not untrue. Desolation Cell, which is where Henry is currently contained. Paradise Gates, the pathway between a dying island and the next island. Uh, Danchi. Danchi's used to be aspirational apartment box. The bubble burst when citizens realised they are a cradle for unhappiness. So what's the difference between the Danchi and the, the ordinary citizen apartments? Citizen housing. A number of apartments were knocked down and replaced with houses as an experiment. Would the citizens stop killing themselves and each other if they have a better quality of life? Well, I mean, you can have a high quality of life and still be, you know, a prisoner in a claustrophobic, rea claustrophobic reality bubble and have that be a problem. Also, it sounds like they have a really shit quality of life. The dead zone. Henry allowed demons to flood into this area. Demons rot the fabric of the world. The area was sealed off to prevent the corruption spreading. Beach, a place to relax in paradise. And then we've got our skins. Uh, let's see, so the first one is inscribed in the surface. Craters on the moon are no accident. The moon used to be smooth, but one of the gods fired meteors at it to write out a message of no consequence. Symbols of justice, which is kind of a jazzy tropical vibe that I quite like. And idol, look to crimson acid. She has been blessed and so can you. Devotion is rewarded. Work hard and play pray hard. Uh, so I'm going to switch to to this picture of Crimson Acid because I like big tits and I'm not ashamed of that. Looks like there's a lot more music to find as well, which will be nice. I might I might assemble a playlist here at some point. Although Leaving is by far my favourite track. I like these gentle synth rhythms. Also, rhythms is really hard to say, especially if you're talking a lot. Uh, right, time to 
jump back into the world and stop getting distracted by my laptop, which is something that would happen a lot in real life if I had a laptop. Unfortunately, I am a real PC gamer and therefore have invested everything in having one like over-engineered desktop PC tower, which I will not be able to save from my house in the event of a fire. Now, how the hell do I get back to where I was? I'm going to have to climb my way back up from the Citizen Apartments, which is clearly slumming it. Um, although, I do want to try and find where that dead nebula... Can I? Oh, I can literally rummage through the bins! What's in here? Don't mind if I do, and it's not stealing because uh, a demon put them there for me to find. Oh, do they all have blood crystals in it? I wonder if it's just blood crystals or if I will one day find evidence in a bin. Huh. So, uh, yeah, I should actually have a plan for my investigation. So, step one was review all of the evidence we currently have access to. I've done that. That's no good. You can actually unlock an air dash and a double jump, which is a fascinating thing to put in a game that has no, like, pressure for doing things quickly or, or any of that kind of stuff. Although I suppose it will allow me to reach places later on. What, what skin do we get this time? Verdant. Plants are very calming. We could all do with some calm. You'll get no argument from me as I ram my face into what can only be a small transformer. Oh, I suppose I could use the fast travel to get back to where I was previously. Which was up by the government building. Otherwise I'll need to go around the long way. On the other hand, I might find some interesting things as I go, rummaging away and discovering things. There's a lot of there's a lot of nice urban spaces. To be honest, if this was a real place, I probably wouldn't hate to live here, except for the fact that there's no, you know, actual stuff to do. There's a place to work, there's some gardens, and there's houses to be in. It's not like there's, you know, museums or nightclubs or whatever. Or at least not that I've found so far. What the hell is this? Remnant obtained. Wishes of the lost. Things better forgotten. Impossible to tell until it is too late. Glistening stone. A small but bright stone. Looking at it makes the world around you fade away, and you can hear distant memories imprinted onto the stone by the wearer. This one is full of happiness. I've never seen one of those before, and that means I don't know if it's something that was added to the game in one of the, uh, one of the, like, free expansion things, which I am going to talk about, uh, a bit later on, <laughs> how I feel about that. Questionable donation, citizens sometimes throw coins into fountains for luck, but luck doesn't exist. Mood. Fascinating grasshopper. Some people get very obsessive about grasshoppers. That feels like a reference to something as well. There's a lot of things in this game that feel like references. Anyway, I think that they've actually done a wonderful job importing kind of vaporwave vibes into a 3D space that feels like it might also be a 3D space that was once inhabited by people. Um, and there's a lot of repeated assets, but one of the virtues of this kind of aesthetic is that you can repeat as assets and build everything out of the same handful of assets and still have it feel like a real place because like the repeated assets are part of the kind of vaporwave vibe. Let's see. Symbol of the secretary, the slow poison of ambition creeps through your veins, never living for the moment, but the next moment. The next moment will forever be out of reach. It doesn't exist, and it never can. Well, ain't that a mood. Right, so I think it's probably time to end this episode. I'm, uh, I'm going to explore the apartments more thoroughly the next time in, th in this area, but uh, actually, I'll tell you what, let's see what this thing is first, because these are definitely something. It's traditional to donate and let blood in prayer at a temple. Sure, why not? May the silent goat walk with me. Oh, uh, excuse me? Okay. Interesting. So I've just discovered that pissing blood is the primary method of worship in this place. That's fascinating. 
that's uh, that's definitely one to to make note of and come back to again later. So I guess put a pin in that. Silent goat carving, a carving about the first god, Silent Goat, was the first god evolved man had contact with. Sometimes known as the first for this reason, captured outside the city of Mahoda, ending in India, tortured in the crystal caves, became aware of the syndicate and gifted them his power, killing himself. What does it mean for a god to be dead, especially in this setting? Anyway, so. Because this is a, a post-real, infinite, uh, digital afterlife of some kind, kept in a, in a folded hole outside of reality, whether or not the Syndicate members can be harmed by anything other than perhaps some kind of malign demonic influence is, is remains to be seen. After all, there's no falling damage. Ooh. Hey, dead nebula. Let's see what we've got this time. B2. Parasol, a light floral drink marketed at women but very popular with men. Sounds delicious. So, um... Oh, that, uh, that's interesting. I'm gonna... I tell you what, I'm gonna go deal with this next episode as I slowly trek my way back to where we started so that I can figure out where to go next, which is this crime scene, I guess. I'm gonna go over there next time. But before then, I'm gonna quickly unlock fast travel oh, over no, here. I'm reluctant to actually use fast travel um, because it costs you a blood crystal and I don't know if your blood crystals are endless. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Are there like 200 in the game and you only need 12 or do they respawn and you can find more or is there a strictly limited number and I would be losing potential in the future if I, if I spend them frivolously. Final moments. This image was the last thing a drowning victim saw. That's grim. So, uh, yeah, that's actually going to be all from me for today. I hope you join me again for some more explorations of this extremely vibesy location. Uh, hopefully, hopefully Lady Love Dies will go to some kind of physician in order to get her horrible blood urination looked at. Perhaps prodded gently and prescribed a medication for. Anyway, that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let's all stare at the moon and hope that the silent goat walks with us. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.